Alrighty. So if you're as big a fan of the gradient fill in ink stitch as I am, you're going to love this video because I've been wanting to do this video ever since the day that I released that last video. The last video for gradient fill was basically my first, it was basically the same as my first LTL gradient fill video with the only difference being making your adjustments in params now that gradient fill is actually supported. So this video is going to be using Inkscape gradient fill tools and Ink Stitch gradient fill tools together to do the same thing and, and be almost completely automatic. This is going to be awesome. Again, been wanting to do this video for a while. Just been just been too busy. So here we go. First thing we're going to do, I'm going to explain Inkscape and Ink Stitch's gradient fill just very briefly before I move on with that. So I'm just going to draw a little box. Here's my little box. It's blue. Under fill, I'm going to select gradient fill. In this gradient fill, we have this is your stops list. You can create as just about as many gradient fill stops as you want. I only want two. So the first color stop is whatever color that blue is. And the second color stop is the exact same thing, but with the alpha channel removed. So on the second one, I'm going to move the alpha channel all the way up, and then I will select a different color. I can convert this into a gradient fill just like it is. And a matter of fact, I'll do that real quick just to show you. Go to Tools, Fill, Convert Gradient Block, boom. There you go. So the whole thing now has one color block over the top of another. And I'll show you that real quick just by grabbing this and moving it out of the way. Just like that. The reason this has a play and stop on it is because it's ink stitch default gradient fill is going to tell it to start in on one end of the gradient fill and end on the other end of the gradient fill. And it does the opposite for both of them and it does it does the adjustment of the dense part and the not dense part automatically. Which is awesome. So I'm gonna show you this. I'm not I haven't adjusted anything to it. I'm going to show you this in a preview. And I'm going to hit fast forward. Um, okay, it's only showing one because I was actually selected on one. But you can see, this is actually good because you can see on this right hand side, it's very dense. And on this left hand, left hand side, it is not as dense. So I, it only stitched one because that's what I was clicked on. So I'm going to not select just one layer and we're going to try it again. There we go. Now I'm going to speed it up. You can see the right hand side on this blue is not dense. And as it's working its way left, it is more dense. So now the, the exact opposite is true for the, what is it, pink, I guess. And just like that, you have a gradient fill. It's, it couldn't be much easier. The thing that becomes difficult is, how do you apply it to an actual design like my LTL? So let's do that now. Actually, let's not do that now. So I'm going to back up until I get back to a gradient fill. And it redo. Okay, so there's my gradient fill. I've got right back to where we were. To adjust this gradient fill, you need your you need to be on the gradient fill screen and then select your nodes tool. So now you see this line inside that has square on one side, round on the other. This is your start, this is your end fill. You can adjust your fill. Just like so. Now I don't have actually a gradient in there until I get to where this square is. That's where the gradient starts. Where the circle is, that's where the gradient ends. 
This is going to be very important. This will be on the test later. So now, if you go into Ink Stitch, Tools, Fill, Gradient Blocks, now this side only has one. Well, it only has one blue, and this side only has one pink, and in the middle is where we have the two overlaps. So now, when I go ink stitch tools, uh, let's see, preview. Now you're starting to see where this is more like my LTL design. So that's one fill. It's not gradient. That is gradient with two colors, and that's not that one's not gradient at all. So just like like what my LTL will end up being, more or less. Outstanding. I love it. All right. So we're going to do the LTL. It's like I did in the last one. I don't think that's the font I used in the last one. Let's go font real quick. I don't remember what the font was. I just remember it was a tab. Okay. I bet that's what it was. Okay. I think that's what it was. If not, it's close enough. So here's my LTL that we're going to make gradient and we're going to go into the fill pool and I want a darker, oh yeah, darker blue, just like that. And we're, that's, that's flat color. Now I'm going to select linear gradient and it's going to take that flat color and make a gradient, but it's going to be the same color with an alpha channel. So on the second one, I'm going to turn up the alpha and then I'm going to select different color. Awesome. My LTL from the previous video did not go in a to the right direction. It was to the up and down direction. So that's where if you're on the gradient tool and you select your nodes tool, that's where this comes in. I'm going to move down here. I'm going to move this up here, and now we have an over under gradient. Uh, Licked it off of it by accident. Now I have an over under gradient, and not only that, but I'm going to squeeze this together so that, and turn it slightly to the side. Maybe slightly like that. Because that last video I did, I, I was shooting for a angular a slight angle to it and it came out similar to that i believe but this is my last video i can't remember blue was on top I, okay so in my last video the blue was on top purple was on bottom but i mean it don't really matter once you stitch it out anyway but it would be as easy as just flipping this around that's it just that easy. So that is just remember this is the Inkscape gradient tool. And then once you got it set the way you want it, then you use the Ink Stitch gradient tool. So now now we'll use the Ink Stitch gradient tool, which is tools fill, convert to gradient blocks, hit apply. Okay, it says it doesn't know how to use uh what I did because I'm using system font and I did not go object path. That's the only reason. So extensions ink stitch. Yeah, we should be able to do it now. Extensions ink stitch. Tools fill. Convert to gradient blocks. Hit apply. Boom. Just like that. Done and done. Go um I need to select the whole thing, select the entire thing, and we're going to go, it should already be, okay, let's, let's see what happens if we try to, try to visualize, I don't think you have to, uh, I think it breaks it apart for you, basically, yes, so it does the break apart for you, more or less, so there's my not, gradient there there's my gradient 
And there's my knot gradient. It's going to do that all, all the way across. And I'll show you how to combine those colors so it's not a pain in the butt to stitch out. But yeah, this is this is exactly what I did in the last video. Much, much, much easier. Alrighty. And you can select a certain one and you can go into ink stitch params and you can play with those parameters if you feel like you need to. But it is uh end of row spacing between rows is standard like where it doesn't gradient and that is also the it is gradient. So spacing between rows, end of row spacing is the gradient part. And if you need to make the gradient part a little bit bigger, then we would go in here at two, six, ten, really? All right, two, six, ten. I'm going to go into ink stitch params and I'm going to change that so that the end of row spacing is a little bit more. We'll say 0.75. It's already got the angles for you. It, it did that automatically. Now I need to figure out the other one. So three, seven, eleven. <laughs> yep. Three, seven, eleven. I'm holding the control button down while I click the additional ones. Then we'll go into extensions, ink stitch, params. And we'll set that one also to 0.75. Hit apply. Boom. Ah, standing. Ink stitch. Um, visualize and simulate. Speed this up. Oh man, so much easier. Hit realistic. Oh yeah. That's the one we were looking for right there. That looks good. Alrighty. So now, when you go to stitch this out, you don't want to have to change purple colors that many times. Um, change blue three times, change purple three times. We're going to do that all at once. So what we're going to do is we're going to select color. I did a control click to specifically set, select that one color. Go into edit. We're going to select same fill color. Now it's selected all the same fill colors. We're going to right click and then we're going to group. We're going to do the same thing for the blue. Edit. Uh, select same fill color. Right click and group. Outstanding. Now let's preview it again. There'll be one color change. How sweet it is. So we're going to go fast forward. There's blue, there's blue, there's blue and blue, and there's purple, purple, purple. So the one blue starts out blue, one color change to purple, done. That's how you can do the fill colors. Select the same fill colors, group it, and then you won't have to change the colors so many times. Anyway, that is it. So, I mean, 15, I'm almost 15 minutes. It's probably going to be a little shorter whenever I uh, edit this down a little bit, but I'm not even at 15 minutes. And not only showed you how to do it, how it works, but also applied it to a previously applied design. The, uh, the gradient tool in Ink Stitch, Ink Stitch 3 is, is just, it's outstanding. It really is. You know I was going to say that. Alrighty. So that's it for this video. And as always, thanks for watching.